morning, Honorable Madam Chair. Good morning to you. How are you? I'm good. Can you please give us a, a pre-up on the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence? Thank you very much. You know very well that uh, 16 days of activism against gender-based violence is a UN declared day globally. But however, as a party, we have also begun to internalize it. As a department, we started by launching small activities in the provinces as a build-up to this big day and event. We began with, the, with the identifying communities where we could go and uh, celebrate on uh, rural women. As you might know that 80% of the food that we consume and 80% of the work that the world is involved in comes through the, the hands of a woman. We also celebrated days like uh, the girl child because we believe when the girl grows, knowing her rights and knowing what is wrong when she is treated in society, she can actually do an action and also protect her body. So all these activities we celebrated in seven provinces as a build-up to the 16 days of gender based violence against women. And in your view, has this gender based violence issue increased or decreased? Uh, to an extent, it has uh, quite increased, unfortunately. At a time when we thought now women know their rights, women and men know what is gender based violence because of the poverty increase the economic crisis and employment you can say a lot of things so it has actually increased that decrease okay and the, any positive since this now uh, looks like an event than the, the culture yes positives are there because now the women know their rights they know how to identify gender-based violence unlike in the past when you talk gender-based violence people would just say ah, we it was taboo but now women know and everyone knows what to do in terms of what, if it is okay on you, if you face the gender-based violence, where to go to report and actually to share with others so that at least the assistance comes their way. Okay. Um, you are a member of parliament. You are the national chairperson of the Assembly of Women. Have you personally um, been exposed to gender-based violence? Any form of violence. Yes, I will start uh, before. I will start before Parliament. Yes, I faced the uh, gender-based violence myself personally as a politician. My house in Marimba was actually ransacked when uh, ZANU PF activists and uh, state agents ransacked the house, taking everything that was written in MDC. And fortunately, I was uh, attending a course somewhere, so I was not at home. But I was also arrested. I've been beaten he, attending a prayer meeting for the MCA way back in 2003, 2006. I've been arrested. I've been detained and denied food while they still in the cells. So to me, gender-based violence is not a new thing. But what is important is for what do you then do if you are faced with gender-based violence? Do you have any way to rush to? Do you have an agent that you can actually do? You need to share, you need to report, you need, and these issues need to be documented. Okay. And how is the situation like in, in Parliament? Yes, in Parliament, uh, proportional representation, you know the six seats that were that you pronounced in the Constitution. Women are called Bagos. Bagos means it's something that is given free. No one actually wants to recognize the PR MPs as members of parliament who represent issues that are to do with people, not only women, but as a constituents, women constituents. But they are called Pakosi and all sorts of names. They are recorded when they speak because you don't represent any constituents. But we need to change that attitude because we are representing communities and not personal issues in parliament. And how has legislation aided GBV issues? Uh, I want to thank the, the, the coming up of a legislation against gender-based violence because it has raised awareness and it has actually uh, brought issues that one can actually report and one can be sued in their personal capacity or collectively if they've committed a crime. 
in the which is called gender based violence. How far has the party gone concerning the 50 50 issue? Uh, slowly, we as a party, I want to appreciate through lobbying and also the understanding of our president in terms of 50 50 because he has actually been talking even in pl platforms to say as a party we need to achieve 50 50. And we have actually in, uh, in the National Standing Committee one of the supreme bodies of the party where we have uh, more women and we have a woman vice president deliberately our constitution says we need to have out of the two the three vice presidents one is to be a woman and deliberately even in congress if women had actually if um, delegates had voted for another woman besides the, the woman seat that was proclaimed there was a deliberate attempt by the party to actually have two women as vice presidents. So I want to say as a party, we have done very well in terms of wanting to achieve 50-50. And come the next Congress, I think, to not have some panic here, because women who also lobby to have two women vice presidents, should that provision actually remain. That was Honorable Paulina Pariwa, the National Chairperson of the Assembly of Women.